So we just ask anybody that can participate in that. Find the scripture, chapter and verse that you can read. You, you know, and we want you voluntarily that you get up and quote the scripture, you know, from heart. Not looking at the book. I mean, if you got to study before that, but make sure you remember the word of God, that you can quote it from, you know, straight from the heart. So we do thank the Lord God for allowing us to be here. Um, thank the Lord God for every brother and sister that's here that had a mind to come out here. We thank God for this day that he gives us. We thank God for the life that he has given us. And we thank God for being the God that he is, that he hasn't changed. He remains to be the same God throughout every part of our life. We may have changed. We have made our ups and downs and we may have went back and forth with this, but God remains to be who he is. He allowed us to come to him and call out for his help. He's still there. You know, he sent his, his unbegotten son that we could be saved, his only begotten son that we could be saved, that we are blessed, that we can get close to God because we have a mediator that gave us access to God that we never had before. Well, we thank the Lord God. We're going to go into some scripture. We're going to start off here today. We're going to start off in the um, book of 2 um, uh, Timothy. 2 Timothy, beginning at verse 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2, uh, beginning at verse at verse 19. The scripture read, first, second Timothy chapter 2, beginning at verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God is sure. Nevertheless, like I said, God remains the same. Nevertheless, it's a sure thing. We don't know if work gonna be work tomorrow. We don't know if the person that said they're gonna love us or leave, but nevertheless. The foundation of God stands sure. The scripture reads, having the seal, having the seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. He is trying to let us know what's the difference between those that belongs to God and those that belongs to the world. Those that belong to God is trying to run from iniquity. They try to stay out of sin. They're not trying to get caught. Those of the world, they want to stay in there. They want to enjoy it. They don't want to leave it. They want to soak up the pleasure. But those that is belongs to God, their mind has changed. The way they feel has changed. See, when God steps in your life, he makes you look at your old ways, and now you never had this feeling before. You despise it. You don't like the things that you used to do. All that is showing you how God has came into your life. The only reason why we look at sin the way we do, because God has placed himself in our life. That's why we're able to look at sin. Now we're able, that's how we're able to put a resistance. Because the simple reason now that God has affected our life, now we have this mind to pull away from the things that don't please God and now we're looking to please him. And he talks about those people having the seal. The spirit of God has sealed the deal. You don't say that the, we, we won't do nothing without the signature. God has placed the Holy Ghost as his signature sign saying this property belongs to me. This is mine. Just like the scripture say, the Lord know them that are his. Once he signed it, it belongs to him. It's mine. I set a seal. It's like back in the days before anything can be announced, the king had to set the seal and he put the step to say he got the approval. Even though he wasn't worthy, even though we wasn't the one that should be here, we wasn't, no one ever thought, you know, some of us, you know, nobody would have thought that God would come into my life and save us. 
They always thought we were gonna be doing the same thing. Over and over and over again, the same thing. But something happened. God stepped in and he changed us. Not only changed us, he came and said, devil, they no longer belong to you, but they are mine. In fact, I will sign it and put a seal to say they have my approval. Not because they're righteous, because the one who died because he's righteous. He's the one that I put everything on, and that's why they got my seal of approval. Because somebody died for them and paid a price for them to be here. So he said, he said, nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that name, name it the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And here we go in here. Verse 20. But in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some of dishonor. See, this is the thing about it. When we talk about vessels, it's talking about, in the words like, a utensil, a bowl, a cup, a plate, also made of a certain material. See, everybody wants to be the gold. Everybody wants to be the silver. Some, some people, I don't want to be the wool. The wood, it's not about that. You know what the important thing is? Who owns you? Who do the silver belongs to? Who do the gold belongs to? Who do the wood belongs to? Are you a vessel that belongs to God that gives him honor? The thing about it is, do you belong to God or he can say, he is mine. He has to say, he said, that in this great house, there's many vessels. Many vessels. Everybody wants to be the most valuable vessel. You don't know either. I, I want some people, I want to preach, I want to do this, I want to do that. You know what? Long as the Lord uses you, that's the important thing about it. As you being used by God. And it's basically talking about it represents these things are being used. We are servants. We are servants of God. We are being used by God. When you talk about a cup, a bowl, it's, most of the time when it talks about these things, it's talking about a container. A container holds something. A plate holds something. A bowl holds something. Both of them functional different. You can't put soup on a plate. It's still a vessel. Only way you're going to put soup, you may have to use a bowl. It's still being used. Certain things got to be used a certain way, but long it's being used by God himself. And it says here, it says, if any man therefore purge himself from these, all these things in the world, if you pull yourself from these things, this is what it is about coming being used by God. When you purge yourself from these things, himself from these, he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified to meet the master's use and prepare unto every good works. When we separate ourselves, we're saying to the world, Lord, use me. Lord, be in me. Lord, I need you. See, I said container. It's not just the thing about being a container. The important thing is what's in the container. It's not just saying I'm just here showing up. Because most people, what they do, they just show up. Long as I have the vessel, long as I walk around with the vessel. But when they come to church, or when they come amongst believers, what do they have? A vessel. But the vessel is empty. Nothing is in the vessel. But long as the person sees that you looking like church. <laughs> long as you look like something that we can praise and not worry about what the vessel Let's see what the scripture says. Give me Matthew 20, 23. Matthew 23 reads here. Matthew 23 at verse. Matthew 23. The scripture read here, Matthew 23. At verse 25 or 20. Verse 5. Verse 5. Yes. Verse 5. Verse 25, Matthew 20. See, 
This is what I'm talking about. Everybody shows up, shows up and they look at, as long as you see me, you look like I'm praising God. But not one was inside you. Long as everybody else give me the praise. Everybody say, girl, you sung that song, but that vessel is empty. Girl, oh my God. Girl, the way you praise God, that vessel is empty. Everybody looking at you, giving praise for what's on the outside. But Jesus got something to say about that. He says here at verse 25, he said, woe unto you, strive the Pharisees, hypocrites. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean outside the cup and up the platter, but within they are full of exhaustion and excess, full of greed and covetous, just full. But the thing about it, all they have is coming from the outside and not worrying about what's in the inside. They clean the cup on the outside. You come before people. You got to be real when we come to church. If you're not there, you're not there. Don't stop pretending. God can work on you when you come honest and sincere. Lord, I am empty. Lord, I need to be filled. We have to have a desire not to be filled with the outside, but be filled with the inside. We want to be used by God. He wants to be that vessel. He wants to be that vessel. The vessel of honor. We want to be that vessel. The problem is people want too much glory and not give God glory. Let everybody see me. The way I dress, the way I talk, the way I look. Instead of having God give glory, walk around as long as they get the praises. But at the same time, nothing is in that vessel. Nothing. Come church. Nothing. Nothing in that vessel. And the thing about it, it even goes to the people that say they have the Holy Ghost. They just brag about it. I hear it so much. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. But the thing about it, what's going on with your vessel? Is God doing something to you? Or are you just cleaning the outside? I have that look. I have the church thing down pat. I have everybody looking at me, making myself feel, feel uplifted and special in church. Long as everybody think I'm brother so and so. Long as everybody think I'm sister so and so. Long as they look at me and think I am special. Long as they look at that clean cup. Long as they don't see what's inside of me. Long as they don't see the real with me. As long as I can just let them see how I clean the outside, how I made everybody give me praise. Long as I can hypocrite, I'm good enough. See, we don't just come to church to show everybody that we're good enough. We come to church so God can get in our vessel. That's the whole important of it. The cleanup come from the inside. Too many people worry about their inside, outside. They worry about the image. They worry about who connected. When people come around, when you see some people, they perform when they praise God. They shout when they praise God. They run around. They do all these things that's a performance. But God see it. He told the scribe, to hypocrite. How you doing is cleaning the outside. They're not worried about your inside. about us being a house. It talks about us being a house. The scripture talks about us being a temple. Whenever you see these things, a cup, 
a table, a, a, a cup, a plate, uh, whatever, a bowl, a bowl. It, 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 it's meant to hold something. A house is meant to be occupied. Something, somebody's supposed to live in a house. They just don't build a house just to build a house. Something's supposed to live in that house. The house had to be occupied. The vessel had to be filled with something. What is the purpose of being here? What is the purpose of building a house and in there? What is the purpose of having a vessel and you don't have nothing in it? Why, Why have cups and you don't have nothing? You have no use for it. I said, what, what's the whole purpose of it? Let's, let's see what the scripture say here. First, um, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5 and 18. Ephesians 5 and 18 reads, you know, people take too much of their time filling their cup with the wrong thing. They're caught up with so much. They have so much Netflix in them. They have so much Instagram in their cup. They have so much Facebook. They have so much being socialite, being all into people's face and business. Their cup is filled with the wrong thing. The thing that has too much contact with them is messing them up. They allow themselves to be accessed by the wrong thing. And the scripture read here at verse, uh, verse 18, 5 and 18, and be not drunk with wine, where is access, but be filled with the Spirit. And don't, don't get so excited and intoxicated of this world. Don't get so filled with everything else. I'm excited. You know it's funny. People get excited about everything else except God. They're like, what? why are you so excited? It don't take a while. Why, why are you? I mean, it's, a, it's amazing when you see these people. Oh, you won the lottery. Look how excited they is. Imagine this. So you come in, you come to church. Oh, you got the Holy Ghost. I mean, why you don't have that same energy and that same expression when you win, when you get something from God? He said, don't be, don't be intoxicated with things. Don't be intoxicated with wine. Don't let that be the thing that controls you. Don't let these things be the thing that control you. He said, but be filled with the Spirit. When they say filled, they say filled, they say filled. It is a continuing thing. You just don't get the Holy Ghost that one time and just go about your business. All of us want to be continued filled. Filled, not only filled, but full. We want God to continue to rain down us and fill our soul with the Spirit. We want the Spirit to take over our life over and over. Take over us, Lord. That's why David said, my cup Run it over. You want to have the Spirit to continue to keep coming. Keep coming. Don't you know the more the Spirit keep coming, the more He keep pushing things out that's not like Him? Do you understand? That's why you get filled. That's why you continue. You get refilled. You get refilled. It's like when we was at the bar, some people are drinking. It's like, oh, that drink was good. I need a refill. I need, a, I need that taste again. How many times people just thank the Lord when he just touched them that one time? No, Lord, fill me up. Lord, fill me up to the rim. Fill me up. Let my cup run over. Hallelujah. Let my cup run over, Lord. Let my cup run over. We got, that means that we continue then. You got to feel it. You gotta feel it. You gotta feel it with the Lord. You gotta feel it. You gotta come every day, all your life. You don't just let yourself become so low that you don't allow yourself to be refilled by God. You don't want that. You want that thing to continue to fill you for me. Not just today, tomorrow, next week. Keep filling me. I'm just not satisfied. Not just this one time. You have that desire, Lord. I love for you. Like as soon as I got the deer paid for the water, I'm thirsty. I'm hungry for you. You are my life. I need you every day. Lord, fill me up. Hallelujah. Fill me up, Lord. You have to always 
look for ways to look for God to fill you with. You got to constantly fill that cup. Keep that cup filled. You got to keep that cup filled. What do you do? What you put? The goodness of God in it. Every time in your life, when God fills you, he puts something in you. He may put peace. He may put love. He may put strength. Whatever it is, let God continue to fill you. Sometimes we can't do things without God continuing to fill us. You know, when Jesus was about to go on the cross, we're not going to go there. He's going in our head to pray. He prayed three times. He had to get filled. He needed God's help to do the will. That flesh was weak. He even said, the flesh is weak, the spirit is willing. I need help, Lord. I'm going to call on you. You know what the scripture say? Pray with all season. You need to continue to build yourself up on God. You got to let God to continue to fill your soul. Don't just let it be that one time. Don't be satisfied that everybody else is. That you him. Thank God for his spirit. No, thank God for his continuing spirit. Hallelujah. God, fill me some more. Fill me some more. You have to constantly feel. You have to constantly feel. You have to constantly feel yourself. You can't. You can't allow your cup, your cup, with your vessel to come empty. You can't allow what's in you not to be occupied. You are a house of God. You are a temple of God. God not just passing by. He's not a guest. We want God to live there. Lord, let this be your residence. When they send the meal, saying, I'm sending a meal for Jesus. Where you located? Right here. Where's Jesus' address? Right here. Where you look for him? He's right here for Brother Kevin. He's right here. His address is in me. When you look for Jesus, he wants to send in me. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants to look for Jesus. He wants to send in me. He wants to send in me. Don't let your cup get empty. In fact, give me all um, Matthew chapter 12, 12. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Beginning in the verse. Let's see what we have. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Beginning in the verse. Let's see what, what the scriptures say. <laughs> Verse 43. There's a reason. There's a reason you don't want your vessel to be empty. It's a reason you don't want your temple to be empty. It's a reason you don't want your house to be empty. Matthew chapter 12 and 43 read, When the unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walked through dry places. See, we just read that. Now think about it. If the Holy Ghost is living water, the evil spirit is not go to living water, it's going to dry places where there's no God. I'm going to dry places. He's looking for another person to get in. I'm going to dry places. I'm looking for a residence. I'm looking somewhere where I can occupy somebody. Because the one I had kicked me out. He kicked me out. He kicked me out. And look what he says. He said, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walks through dry places. When it is, so he's, he's desperate looking for a place to dwell. He's going to different places. He's going where God is not at. He's going amongst his the familiar people that don't praise God. He's going where the places where God is not lifted. He's going, he's looking for a dwelling place. The spirit can't rest till he finds a home. So where he's going to go? Where can he find a suitable home? A place where there's no water. A place where there's no living room. There's a place where there's no fountain that they can continue to drink for. I'm looking for a dry place to stay. It says here, he said, he said, and when the unclean spirit is going on the man, he walking 
through dry places. You keep walking through dry places, seeking rest. And he finds none. He finds none. And what happened after that? And then he said, I will, listen to the thing about it. This is the key word. He said something for you. The spirit said, the evil spirit, the unclean spirit said this. Then he said, I will return unto my house. He said, I still have claim on that. It still belonged to me. Yeah, it's a, it's, the thing about it, we kick the devil out for why he still got the spare key. Why he still have access to us. Why does he have, I used to say, I used to say this a long time ago, okay, you kick the guy out, but his clothes still in. Apparently you're waiting for him to return. Apparently you're waiting for him to return. Apparently you want him to come back because he has all this stuff. We say, it's all the Lord. You ain't no more coming back in here. He said, I will return unto my house from which I came out. And when he come, he find it empty. Keyword, empty. Not only empty, sweat, clean up, and garnish. Everything is straight. But the key thing is, it's empty. There's no, there's no occupation there. I mean, there's no occupy. Nobody's occupying there. Nobody's there. So now, what happens? Because, is this what happened to anybody? It's like, my spirit wasn't good enough. Because why? He kicked my spirit out. So I'm going to have to do something worse to him. I'm going to have to do something that's going to mess him up. Oh, what am I going to do? Verse 45. And he, and he, then he goes, then he goes, he, then he goes he, and take with him seven other spirits for wicked than himself. And they enter, they enter in and dwell, live there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first, even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. The house was clean. The only problem, it was empty. There's nothing was there to hold something. You are the temple of God. You belong to God. You are here for God. That's why God's supposed to fill you. Your house ain't supposed to be empty. Do not rely or allow yourself to become empty in Christ. Don't allow yourself to come to the point that you don't have nothing. It's going to come a time the devil's going to attack us because not of the outside looking good. He's attacking us for what we have inside of us. He's trying to take what's inside of us out of us. He's trying to get us to be empty. He's just trying to be up. And you know what? Do not let yourself or your vessel become empty in God. You always fill it with God. Get up in the morning and pray. What are you doing? I'm filling my vessel. I'm calling on God. Get up and seek the word of God. What are you doing? I'm filling my vessel. I'm filling it. I'm filling it. I'm putting everything that's righteous in me. I'm putting everything that's godly in me. I'm filling my vessel. I'm filling my vessel. Let's go back to um, Ephesians 5 and 18. I think it's verse 19 I want to read here. It says here, Ephesians 5, 5 and 19, I believe. Ephesians 5 and 19. Ooh, this is how you feel. He said, Verse 19, speak unto yourself songs. I'm, what you doing? You got all these songs. What am I doing? I'm filling my vessel. What is your speak to them, speak and hymns, spiritual songs, saying and making a melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always. I wake up and say thanks to the Lord. What I'm doing? I'm filling my vessel with God. That's why you never let yourself become empty when the devil can come move right back in. Always fear yourself. So whenever he comes back, he knows the presence of God is there. He said, oh, you got a new boyfriend. No, I don't got a new boyfriend. I'm so married now. I got a husband. And you can't come here no more. You have 
to allow yourself to stay filled. Do not let yourself become empty every day of your life. Because, because you're going to get low. You're going to get low. You won't have no moments. But it's your job. Stop looking for everybody else. It's your job to make sure you're filled. It's your job. It's your job to make sure God is filling you. And keep filling you. Keep filling you. Not just that one time. Just you can have that testimony everybody has. God, continue filling me. Fill me to the room. Let my cup run over. You know what happens when the cup run over? That means when the cup run over, everything out of the cup starts touching people. Now you see the love of God in my life. Now you see that the peace of God is running over and touching you. It touched me first and not running over and touching you. The cup is being filled by God. Don't you never let your cup run in deep. Never let your vessel run. Never let the house not be occupied. Let the light stay on and somebody always home. That deterred the thing. Because like we we're gonna break the house, but it seems like somebody's there. But as long as somebody's present, it's not easy for anybody to just come up in the house. You know what I'm saying? Because the simple reason why the house is occupied. Never let yourself run empty. Never let yourself run down. Try. Let the spirit continue to spring up in you. You gotta continue to call on God. Just not just be satisfied. Oh God, you moved on me yesterday, last year. Oh, I, I remember. I got no remember. Lord, right here, right now, feel me. I'm not satisfied with that only touch you gave me a long time ago. I want more. Feel me, Lord. And let me continue feel. They do. Does it feel? You know when it get full full, it, it start pushing all this stuff out. Devil said, I want to get in. But they are too full. And he said, the ship talks about how he went to and fro. He went to and fro. He said, I couldn't touch Job. I can't touch Job. Because you got something around him. He was got something. I, I can't really deal with that person. That's something in them. Stopping me from using them. Something that I want to use this person, but they got a seal. They belong to God. I want them to be mine, but they have God approval that they belong to Him. So I want them. I desire to have them. I want to sit them that way, but something is stopping me. It's the presence of God in their life, it's the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God. Every day of your life, you feel your God. Every time you look around, you call on God. Don't just get so still that I'm um, like a steel cracker. Like, oh, oh, Lord, give me some. You know, today's the day the Lord made. Today's the day. Right here. Today's the day. I want you today. And when tomorrow comes, tomorrow is the day. I want you more. I want you to fill me up. Right here, right now, Lord. I satisfy. That's my thing. You know, when people just get that one touch and they're done. Oh, you know, God. Like the Holy Ghost talking, oh, God, fill me. And not just fill me and say, I'm not filled. Lord, fill me and change me. Let me be used by you. Let me be called your servant. God, let me be your vessel of honor. Let me be your vessel of honor. Every day you just, you gotta get up. Every time you feel yourself low, you feel low. You know, I, you know, I, 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 was, I, was, I was tired and I was sick. And I was getting, I said, you know what? You need to start praying. I told myself I need to start praying. Because I feel that, because you're feeling this way, you know, it's giving an opportunity to the devil to start just dealing with you because you're frustrated. So I said, you know what? My cup is running empty. I began to call on God. I said, God, fill me. I said, Lord, fill me, Lord. Keep continuing to fill me. And even before long, you know, I was in this like kind of like a, a sad state. But when the Spirit came, I was a changed person. Don't you remember when David, after the child died, he was a certain way? And then when the child after the child died, when the child was sick, he was a certain way. 
And then when the child died, he got up, he was like a different person. They said, I don't understand. That's how it's doing God. When you walk with God, you be like, man, I thought you were depressed. It seems like you got joy. What happened? What happened? You, you just excited. What happened? I got filled. That's why. I was so excited. I said, I got filled. My wife didn't even take me. My wife was like, what's wrong with you? I said, I got filled. I got filled with the spirit. I got God in me. And now I'm not joy. You know, I get the part I start talking about it. I start expressing because why? He done something to me. He got in me and filled me. He filled me again. I was so excited. I was up like four in the morning just talking. He said, you just got a lot. I was up last night because why? He kept feeling. He kept feeling. And now I just, all I had to do is talk about God. That's all I had to do. Well, I thought I was crazy that night. So I was crazy this morning. I was so full. I had to let somebody know about God. I was so full. I had to share it. I had to let somebody know. Man, I was at this point and God filled me. He took me out of the stage I was in and he let my cup run over. Now I'm excited. I got to share this thing with somebody. I got to share this. I was just so excited. Whoever you is, you, you protect what's in you. You protect what's in you. You don't allow Nobody to put anything else in you. That's it's anybody. That goes for anybody. I go for your mom, your, your best friend. You protect what's inside you. You protect what's going inside of you. You just don't let anything get up inside of you. You fill yourself up with God's spirit. Because the enemy, the devil, is coming for what's in you. But remember the scripture say, greater as he that is in you than he is in the world. He will protect you from that evil spirit. But the thing about it, we got to keep him there. Let him dwell. Let him say, this is your house, God. This is your residence. This is your place. I'm not letting you leave. I'm not allowing my cup to be empty. You stay here. Whatever it is, it's your house. He got to be able to roam through every part of your house. You can't, well, Jesus can't go in that closet. No, Jesus, you live here. Hold up that closet. What they got in that closet? Kind of skeletons. God, you touch that too. It's your house. It's your house. Every day of your life, every time you get empty, every time you get to the point where Lose it. Ask God to fill you. You got to ask God to fill you. You got to say, God, keep filling me. Lord, keep filling me. Keep filling me. That's why you, you, you can't. You know how many times you got to fill you? You know how many times? Until Jesus comes. Until Jesus comes. I'm not, it's just, oh, I'm good. I had a good time at church that night. That ain't it. I'm calling on you today. I'm calling on you now. Oh, I, I, I feel it's getting low. Oh no, I'm about to build up my the Holy. I'm about to build up with the Holy Ghost. I'm about to build up with me. I go sit here and just sit around blowing. The Spirit fills me with joy. Hey man, you was acting a funny when you were there. I can you got joy all of a sudden. It, it wasn't nothing external. It was him stepping in me. He filled me with joy. And I began to rejoice. Because he filled me, I have joy. He stepped in me and gave me joy. He stepped in me and gave me patience. He stepped in me. I can endure things that I couldn't because why? He filled me up with it. He equipped me. The scripture says to all these good works, I got equipped by the Spirit. The task that come before me, and I keep calling on him, he will fill me up. Whatever battles I have to fight, he will come up and equip me to stand up against anything because it all comes from him. Continue to fill me. That's what it's about. These people just, oh, thank God. I, don't, I mean, I'm not knocking nobody for that. I'm not knocking nobody for that. But one of the things I do blame, especially leaders, that's all they want to hear. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God. You continue to get filled. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah, I got filled in in '98. <laughs> so that's all you you working with? No, I want God fill me, 
let your spirit overflow. If I can, and it's too much for me to bear, fill this vessel up. God, step inside. Take control. Have your way, Lord. This body belongs to you. I present myself as a living sacrifice. This is yours, Lord. It belongs to you. I've been sealed. You don't own them. I'm not owned by the devil. Y'all feel yourself. Every time you get a chance, you feel yourself. Pray without ceasing. Feel yourself. Say to the Lord, feel yourself. You feel yourself. You stay right there. Feel yourself with goodness, virtue. Feel yourself. Let yourself be overflowed with God's goodness. Because you know the devil's coming. And he's going to try to take these things out of you. But if you're full, even if he tries to take some of you, pull some out of you, then the Spirit step in and refill that spot. Because it comes time when you may love somebody and it took so much out of you. But you call on God and the Spirit refilled that love. Now you can go back and love people that don't love you. Because it was the Spirit. It was the Spirit. It couldn't be you. You would have never did it. You would go back and start loving people and helping people. You would give up on people. But the Spirit came and filled in the place where the devil took from you. Brothers and sisters, don't allow yourself to get empty. Always seek God. Always. Do not stop. You know, when Paul and them began to get beat, you know, I mean, Peter, when they got beat, the situation with Paul, he got beat too. But either way it goes, no matter how much the trials come, when you rely on the Spirit, you'll be able to endure so much stuff that you never could. Because it says you will receive power. You were able to overcome things that you couldn't. Now you're home because you've been filled. You have received power. It's nothing but the Spirit. That's why you walk by faith. That's why you're able to walk in the Spirit because the Spirit aids you. It helps you to do the will of God. Don't let your cup get empty. Don't let your house be unoccupied. Always let God be in your presence. Don't give space for the devil. Don't give place for the devil. When he comes, when you see him, when you know it's an appearance of evil, when you know, okay, evil is coming, and you know it's coming, it's like, oh, it's about the rain. I'm going to wait for the rain to come, and then I'm going to worry about getting dry or rain or umbrella. No, if you see it's coming, start praying. When you see it's coming, seek the Lord. I'm just saying it just come your way. Get yourself prepared. And get yourself filled. How is yourself running empty? I'll never let yourself run empty. God got to occupy you for the rest of your life. So we do thank the Lord God for everyone that's here. We ask God to bless y'all. That God continue to feed you. Don't just do it one day. And know that. Have the Holy Ghost. Don't just be satisfied. I have him. I have him as an ongoing thing. He can constantly keep filling me. That I can't even take too much. It goes to the point you say, oh no, God, this is too much. It's unbearable. Let him feel you. And God continue to bless everyone in the room. That he can continue to keep you. Let the Lord fear everyone in the room. You seek the Lord, he's healing you.